Hello and welcome to a new episode of Value Investing Decoded. Uh, if you remember, in season one last year, uh, you heard from Sanjay Bhattacharya, one of the doyens of Indian equity investing industry. Uh, and uh, after the interview, while chatting with him, I asked him, who are the other people I should interview? One of the names he suggested I must meet and must interview for this series uh, is uh, Chandresh Nigam. Uh, and uh, he's the man I'm going to be speaking with today. Uh, Chandrish Nigam is uh, Managing Director and CEO, Axis Mutual Fund, and uh, we're going to be discussing investing with him. Uh, Mr. Nigam, thank you very much. Hello, thanks. Thanks Great for having me. Great to have me. you with us, yeah. For the uninitiated, for the viewers, our viewers, can you first describe what is your investing philosophy, uh, stock investing philosophy? Right. So I think let's start from the very basic. I think why should one invest in stocks in the first place? I think we all know if we really want to build wealth long run, then we need to get into the equity markets. So having said that, I mean, what is it or what kind of businesses or what kind of stocks you need to buy to be able to create wealth? So I'm going to talk about long-term wealth creation, not about trying to make money in the short run by trading in the market. So we're Absolutely. talking about medium to long-term investing. As we know, uh, the market has lots of different kinds of companies, I mean, representing large number of different varied kinds of businesses, you know, underlying businesses. If you want to do a study of you know, what kind of businesses have created wealth for their owners, which is the shareholders, the investors, then one thing which comes out very clearly is businesses which are able to sustain good long-term growth. Okay. And I will explain what I mean by what is good long-term growth. Those which have been able to do that have really created humongous amounts of wealth for investors. There is sufficient data to back that and prove that over the last 10, 20, 30 years, whatever your investment horizon or period of study you may want to choose. Now, what is it that, that qualifies as a great long-term growth story? See, the Indian context, the growth is everywhere. I think in one sense we are extremely lucky that we are operating in the market at this stage of the economic development cycle of, of India, where we have a lot of tailwinds and for most products and services, there is very low penetration levels. And it looks like that you know, as the country becomes wealthier and people have better jobs, etc., and productivity rises, this low level of penetration will ensure that many products and services will see very large rates of growth for very long periods of time. And that's essentially the charm of an emerging market like India. But we also know that businesses or companies operating in all these segments or all companies operating in a single industry are not going to create wealth. It's not possible for all of them. So what are the businesses which are going to create wealth? It comes to, I think, two or three things. First is competitive advantage. Something which allows you, one, to grow faster than your competitors. Two, allows you to charge a price which is better so as to ensure a reasonably good what we call as return on equity. So it's an input-output uh, ratio which says how efficiently or how much can I get per unit of capital deployed. So you have to have some long, some sustainable, some competitive, competitive advantage, advantage to start with. So if you are selling a Me Too product, a commodities kind of business where you have no control over pricing, it's unlikely that you will be having reasonably high return on equities. And that, I think, is something which is required for long-term wealth creation. But then sustain, it's competitive advantage doesn't... It's not a static concept. That, hey, today I have a great product, great service. I have... Uh, some ownership of the mind of the customer which, al which makes him pay a reasonably good price as also positions my product uh, positively in his mind. So he prefers my product over others and that's why for various reasons, whether it is technology, whether it is just the brand image, whether it is the packaging, whatever, uh, which allows him to pay that higher price and hence I get a, a much better yield on my entire business, which is in terms of the return on equity. But as I said, this is not a static concept. I think what you need to look at is uh, businesses which are doing enough to be able to sustain this kind of an advantage. So at various points in time, you will find companies which are operating at very good or high profitability or high ROEs, 
But the key to long-term wealth creation is not just that. Then it becomes easy. You just look at the past three, four years or five years financial numbers and look at the businesses which have been doing well and that's it. But I think business investing is slightly more, you know, involves a little bit more. And that's about being able to understand the business, what is where the business is going, mm. what is the management doing to you know, keep that lead as compared to their competition. That's, I mean, now you're coming to looking into the future. Into the future. Right. And the way you look into the future is that you have to go into the past and study how the managements have behaved in the past, what are the capabilities they bring to the fore, do they have the vision and understanding of how this business or this industry is going to shape up, what are the critical drivers, and whether these people will be able, or this set, the management group will be able to stand up to the task of ensuring that they do the right things, deploy the right strategies to ensure long-term competitive. You know, uh, I, can't, I can't resist saying this. For mutual funds, they say past performance is not indicative of future returns. But in the case of businesses and promoters, yes. So I, I think, mean, I think it's, it holds so true. I think, I think while we do say in mutual funds that past performance is no indicator, I think past performance should be seen as trying to understand what is the thought process, what is the philosophy, how managers in cases of mutual fund, fund managers in cases of business, the business managers mm -hmm. uh, behave uh, when faced with different kinds of situations. Generally, so for evaluating yeah. businesses, past performance is extremely important oh, absolutely. as well. Right? I think I mean, there is that's one, the track record that so you have. How do you evaluate the capabilities of the management mm -hmm. uh, to, to be able to take a call that, hey, this management will keep this company ahead mm -hmm. of the competition? Uh, not for one, two years, but five, ten years. I think uh, when we are talking about long-term wealth creation, the first thing is that this company, one, should survive the next five, ten, fifteen years. Two, should continue to grow well five, ten, fifteen years. Three, should be able to sustain a competitive advantage over the next five, ten, three, or whatever number of periods. So I think uh, that's hence uh, trying to understand the business, understanding the management becomes extremely, extremely, extremely important. Mm. So I would think from, if you ask the question about my investing style, idea is to identify, and then you don't need to identify lots of these companies, you have a few of them, businesses which have demonstrated what I call excellence. Excellence is about compounding business value mm. no, continuously. Mm. Uh, sounds little technical but just keep growing the business mm -hmm. and do those three things right i think ensure that uh, one you deploy capital efficiently two you continue to build on competitive advantages and three have a, the vision which is in line with what the development Devil. of the industry is okay just what just one point just to step back uh, is getting the sector right very important or it's uh, it doesn't it, it matters little so I think every company, when you analyze, you need to understand where the sector is going. Mm. So uh, in my scheme of things, uh, identifying a sector is not that important. Mm. Identifying the company is because what I have found is these kinds of great growth businesses mm. are available across sectors. Mm. I mean, uh, for a particular time frame, you may not find anything uh, of, uh, no, uh, of substance for some period of time, but generally speaking, uh, you are able to, and that's actually the beauty of the Indian market, that you know, there are a large number of such companies available across a number of sectors. But as you it said, just, just, it yeah. just so happens that yes, there are some sectors, because of historical reasons, more such companies exist. So in that sense, there is a sector but bias. But I think you made one exception when you said commoditized businesses, right? right. I mean, oil, metal, mining, those kind of, uh, right. where you have no control over import right. prices. Right. I mean, uh, those are, Traditionally yeah, low. Yeah, so uh, I, I think there you have to, you don't have control over the output price, mm -hmm. but if there is something, whether it's a technology or location or geography or distribution, which allows you to have much lower and sustainably lower costs as compared to your competition, then that would also qualify as a long term sustainable competitive advantage. And that if it can lead sure. uh, you to sure. generate superior ROEs for long term, then mm -hmm. that could also. Uh, you know, qualify as, as a good investment. Mm -hmm. But generally you find very few of those uh, in, in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at, uh, my, my thought is Just more Just one on more point, for the, for the lay investor who wanted to do this, who wants to learn the tricks uh, of the trade, uh, would you say look for businesses which sell to consumers? 
rather than businesses which sell to businesses? Is well, that a, a yeah, so I think you, you hit it right. I think selling to consumers, getting the mind share of the customer. I mean, let's say cust customer because then it can include both consumers as well as businesses, so intermediaries mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in that sense or institutions in that sense. Mm -hmm. If you can get your product uh, placed in the mind of your customer, whether it's a retail customer or an institutional customer in that sense, I think you've got it made. I think that's where what you need to look at. So you could look at any sector and say, why is a particular customer buying product of a particular provider or mm -hmm. a company? Mm -hmm. And I think if you can answer that question that this company has superior products, is able to uh, address requirements of customers better, understands customers better, and has been doing it for the last few years, mm -hmm. I think then that's the first real starting point for you to start to see. That then you're on to something. Then you are on to something. Then mm -hmm. you're on to something probably mm -hmm. big. And, and as I said, see, business has evolved. So uh, nature of businesses over the last 20 years, as I have seen it, I mean, when you started investing with them, uh, you had an inkling that, yes, they are going to grow. But that's where I think I, I have a very firm belief that actually good things happen to good companies. And what is good companies? Again, it comes boils down to management and their vision and, 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 and uh, efficiencies, productivity, etc. Uh, businesses have grown 30, 40 x over the last 20 years. I mean, you just compound at 20 percent or 25 percent for 10 years, you get 10 x, and another 10 times, so you will get 50, 60 x. But you can't predict that the day you were investing. In, yeah. Yes. So on that day, you have to take a call on on essentially the management, and and that's where studying their past and what they have done in the past becomes mm -hmm. extremely extremely important. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, you know. So the title of the show is Value Investing Decoded. Uh, there is of course the uh, the term the the value investing is a style of investing, right. and of course everybody seeking value in the market. In your experience, how important is it to get the price right? I mean, get the value when you start, when you get in. Uh, or you think, I mean, the starting point is not very important. If you've got a great growth story and you're in it and you get in at any point, I mean, that, that's good enough. Right. I think, uh, let me just start off with a quote, you know, which I heard long, long time back. The price to buy a great, really great business is, could be anything. Mm. Okay. If you're really buying something for 50 years and... 30 years and all that, which many of us don't have the luxury of buying. It's a different story. But if you think there's something which is going to grow at, let's say, 20% for the next 20, 30 years, then it doesn't matter if the P is 15 or 30 or 50. It doesn't matter because you're still going to make a lot of money over the investment horizon. So to answer your question, yes, I think uh, the first place to start is not valuation. The first place to start is, is this company really a great business? Is this going to be a great wealth creator. Mm. I think, yes, wealth creator obviously means where you start in terms of the price you buy in. Mm. But then more important, I think, is where you end. I think uh, people have created multi-billion dollar businesses. And when they started, maybe they were a few hundred million dollars. And it actually didn't matter whether you bought it at 100 million or 200 million. Mm. There are times when you can get them cheap because some of, sometimes people are not focused on these businesses that mm. much mm. because maybe their time horizon is not that long. Or sometimes you get to buy these businesses because they look a trifle expensive at that point in time and people are not able to see long term and say that this business could be. So there is what I call a long term, short term arbitrage. It's a great arbitrage available to people who are have the capacity and more importantly, the willingness to look to, long, long yeah, term. Yeah. So stocks are moving and most of the time responding to actions of short-term short -term, traders uh, yeah. and investors. Yeah. So if you are long-term and you can get your analysis right, I think that gives you a huge arbitrage. Mm. Which obviously means that sometimes when as soon as these stocks start to look a little bit more expensive on a short-term basis, that's where you get your major opportunities. But that's not to say that you will never get opportunities to buy them at what you would then call as typical value. You know, Traditional definition Traditional of value. Value. Yeah. value is still there even at a higher price, but mm. then you get deep value so, so as to Once in a while. Certainly, you do get it when there yeah. are market corrections or mm. you know, panic in the markets and mm. you do get those opportunities. Mm. And another important part in requirement for this whole uh, investing style is building conviction in yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where study, understanding, and you do go wrong sometimes, you do expect uh, and as I said, many a times these stocks may not be very cheaply available. Mm. You know? So if you go wrong, then 
you have a slightly bigger loss in these because yeah, the downside yeah, could yeah, be could yeah, be reasonably yeah, large. Yeah. And so one has to be careful and one has to uh, get to that level of conviction, share the vision of the management mm. and say whether they, these guys are really going to really make it. The good thing in the Indian context though I must say is the risk can be controlled because generally everything is growing. Mm. So unless the company quality is so poor and you misjudged it so much, mm -hmm. generally these businesses will still keep growing. And mm -hmm. our, my basic uh, ex, uh, philosophy or expectation from stocks is that corporate profits do drive stock prices. Stock so if prices. these businesses are anyway growing, you will still make money. Uh, so you will not lose much if you have a holding period. But will it become a great wealth creator? I mean, you have to continuously keep evaluating uh, mm -hmm. the situation as, as you go forward. <laughs>